Section 15 of the Forbidden Books of the New Testament, translated by Archbishop Wake. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Barnabas, chapters 1 through 9. The General Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 1. Preface to the Epistle. All happiness to you, my sons and daughters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us in peace having perceived abundance of knowledge of the great and excellent laws of god to be in you i exceedingly rejoice in your blessed and admirable souls because you have so worthily received the grace which was grafted in you for which cause i am full of joy hoping the rather to be saved inasmuch as i truly see a spirit infused into you from the pure fountain of god having this persuasion and being fully convinced thereof because that since i have begun to speak unto you I have had a more than ordinary good success in the way of the law of the Lord, which is in Christ, for which cause, brethren, I also think verily that I love you above my own soul, because that therein dwelleth the greatness of faith and charity, as also the hope of that life which is to come. Wherefore, considering this, that if I shall take care to communicate to you a part of what I have received, it shall turn to my reward that I have served such good souls, I gave diligence to write in a few words unto you, that together with your faith your knowledge also may be perfect there are therefore three things ordained by the lord the hope of life the beginning and the completion of it for the lord hath both declared unto us by the prophets those things that are past and opening to us the beginnings of those that are to come wherefore it will behoove us as he has spoken to come more holily and nearer to his altar I therefore not as a teacher but as one of you will endeavor to lay before you a few things by which you may on many accounts become the more joyful chapter two that god has abolished the legal sacrifices to introduce the spiritual righteousness of the gospel seeing then the days are exceedingly evil and the adversary has got the power of this present world we ought to give the more diligence to inquire into the righteous judgments of the lord now the assistance of our faith are fear and patience our fellow combatants long-suffering and continent whilst these remain pure in what relates unto the lord wisdom and understanding and science and knowledge rejoice together with them for god has manifested to us by all the prophets that he has no occasion for our sacrifices or burnt offerings or oblations saying thus to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me saith the lord i am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hands? Ye shall no more tread my courts. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Your new moons and sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, I cannot bear with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. These things, therefore, hath god abolished that the new law of our lord jesus christ which is without the yoke of any such necessity might have the spiritual offering of men themselves for so the lord saith again to those heretofore did i at all command your fathers when they came out of the land of egypt concerning burnt offerings of sacrifices but this i commanded them saying let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor and love no false oath for as much then as we are not without understanding we ought to apprehend the design of our merciful father for he speaks to us being willing that we who have been in the same error about the sacrifices should seek and find how to approach unto him and therefore he thus bespeaks us the sacrifice of god is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart god will not despise wherefore brethren we ought the more diligently to inquire after those things that belong to our salvation that the adversary might not have any entrance into us and deprive us of our spiritual life wherefore he again speaketh to them concerning these things you shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high is it such a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the lord but to us he saith on this wise is not this the fast that i have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to the house 
when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh then shall thy light break forth as morning and thy health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee the glory of the lord shall be thy reward then shalt thou call and the lord shall answer thou shalt cry and he shall say here i am if thou put away from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul in this therefore brethren god has manifested his foreknowledge and love for us because the people which he has purchased to his beloved son were to believe in sincerity and therefore he has shown these things to all of us that we shall not run as proselytes to the jewish law chapter three the prophecies of daniel concerning the ten kings and the coming of christ wherefore it is necessary that searching diligently into those things which are soon to come to pass we should write to you what may serve to keep you whole to which end let us flee from every evil work and hate the errors of the present time that we may be happy in that which is to come let us not give ourselves the liberty of disputing with the wicked and sinners lest we should chance in time to become like unto them for the consummation of sin is come as it is written as the prophet daniel says and for this end the lord hath shortened the times and the days that his beloved might hasten his coming to his inheritance for so the prophet speaks there shall ten kings reign in the heart and there shall rise last of all another little one and he shall humble three kings and again daniel speaks in like manner concerning the kingdoms and i saw the fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had ten horns i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before which were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots we ought therefore to understand this and i beseech you as one of your own brethren loving you all beyond my own life that you look well to yourselves and be not like those who add sin to sin and say that their covenant is ours also nay but it is ours only for they have forever lost that which moses received for thus saith the scripture and moses continued fasting forty days and forty nights in the mount and he received the covenant from the lord even the two tables of stone written by the hand of god but having turned themselves to idols they lost it as the lord also said to moses moses go down quickly for thy people which thou hast brought forth out of egypt have corrupted themselves and turned aside from the way which i commanded them and moses cast the two tables out of his hands and their covenant was broken that the love of jesus might be sealed in your hearts unto the hope of his faith wherefore let us give heed unto the last times for all the time past of our life and our faith will profit us nothing unless we continue to hate what is evil and to withstand the future temptations so the son of god tells us let us resist all iniquity and hate it wherefore consider the works of the evil way do not withdraw yourself from others as if you were already justified but coming altogether in one place inquire what is agreeable to and profitable for the beloved of god for the scripture saith woe unto him that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight let us become spiritually a perfect temple to god as much as in us lies let us meditate upon the fear of god and strive to the utmost of our power to keep his commandments that we may rejoice in his righteous judgments for god will judge the world without respect of persons and every one shall receive according to his works if a man shall be good his righteousness shall go before him if wicked the reward of his wickedness shall follow him take heed therefore lest sitting still now that when we are called we fall asleep in our sins and the wicked one getting the dominion over us stir us up and shut us out of the kingdom of the lord consider this also although you have seen so great signs and wonders done among the people of the jews yet this notwithstanding the lord hath forsaken them beware therefore lest it happen to us as it is written there may be many called but few chosen chapter four that christ was to suffer is proved from the prophecies concerning him for this cause did our lord vouchsafe to give up his body to destruction that through the forgiveness of our sins we might be sanctified that is by the sprinkling of his blood 
Now for what concerns the things that are written about him, some belong to the people of the Jews, and some to us. For thus saith the scripture, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and by his blood we are healed. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Wherefore we ought the more to give thanks unto God, for he hath both declared unto us what is past, and not suffered us to be without understanding of those things that are to come. But to them he saith, The nets are not unjustly spread for the birds. This he spake, because a man will justly perish, if having the knowledge of the way of truth he shall nevertheless not refrain himself from the way of darkness. And for this cause the Lord was content to suffer for our souls, although he be the lord of the whole earth to whom god said before the beginning of the world let us make man after our own image and likeness now how he suffered for us seeing it was by men that he underwent it i will shew you the prophets having received from him the gifts of prophecy spake before concerning him but he that he might abolish death and make known the resurrection from the dead was content as it was necessary to appear in the flesh that he might make good the promise before given to our fathers and preparing himself a new people might demonstrate to them whilst he was upon the earth that after the resurrection he would judge the world and finally teaching the people of israel and doing many wonders and signs among them he preached to them and showed the exceeding great love which he bare towards them and when he chose his apostles which were afterwards to publish his gospel he took men who had been very great sinners that thereby he might plainly shew that he came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance then he clearly manifested himself to be the son of god for had he not come in the flesh how should men have been able to look upon him that they might be saved seeing that if they beheld only the son which was the work of his hands and shall hereafter cease to be they are not able to endure steadfastly to look against the rays of it wherefore the son of god came in the flesh for this cause that he might fill up the measure of their iniquity who have persecuted his prophets unto death and for the same reason also he suffered for god hath said of the stripes of his flesh that they were from them and i will smite the shepherds and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered thus he would suffer because it behooved him to suffer upon the cross for thus one saith prophesying concerning him spare my soul from the sword and again my flesh trembleth for fear and again the congregation of wicked doers rose up against me they have pierced my hands and my feet and again he saith i gave my back to the smiters and my face i set as hard as a rock chapter five the subject continued and when he had fulfilled the commandment of god what says he who will contend with me let him stand against me or who is he that will implead me let him draw near to the servant of the lord woe be to you because ye shall all wax old as a garment the moth shall eat you up and again adds the prophet he is put for a stone of stumbling behold i lay in zion for a foundation a precious stone a choice corner stone an honourable stone and what follows and he that hopeth in him shall live for ever what then is our hope built upon a stone god forbid because the lord hath hardened his flesh against sufferings he saith i have put me as a firm rock and again the prophet adds the stone which the builders refused has become the head of the corner and again he saith this is the great and wonderful day which the lord hath made as i write these things the more plainly to you that you may understand i for indeed i could be content even to die for your sakes but what saith the prophet again the counsel of the wicked encompassed me about they came about me as bees about the honeycomb and upon my vesture they cast lots for as much then as our saviour was to appear in the flesh and suffer his passion was hereby foretold for thus saith the prophet against israel woe be to their souls because they have taken wicked counsel against themselves saying let us lay snares for the righteous because he is unprofitable to us moses also in like manner speaketh to them behold thus saith the lord god 
enter ye into the good land of which the Lord hath sworn to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that he would give it to you and possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now what the spiritual meaning of this is, learn. It is as if it had been said, Put your trust in Jesus, who shall be manifested to you in the flesh. For man is the earth which suffers, for as much as out of the substance of the earth Adam was formed. What therefore does he mean when he says, Into a good land flowing with milk and honey? Blessed be our Lord, who has given us wisdom, and a heart to understand his secrets. For so says the prophets, Who shall understand the hard sayings of the Lord, but he that is wise and intelligent, and that loves his Lord? Seeing therefore he has renewed us by the remission of our sins, he has put us into another frame, that we should have souls like those of children, forming us again himself by the Spirit. For thus the scripture saith concerning us, where it introduceth the Father speaking to the Son, Let us make man after our likeness and similitude, and let them have dominion over the beasts of the earth, and over the fowls of the air, and the fish of the sea. And when the Lord saw the man which he had formed, that, behold, he was very good, he said, Increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And this he spake to his son. I will now show you how he made us a new creature in the latter days. The Lord saith, Behold, I will make the last as the first. Wherefore the prophet thus spake, Enter into the land flowing with milk and honey, and have dominion over it. Wherefore ye see how we are again formed anew as also he speaks by another prophet. Behold, saith the Lord, I will take from them, that is, from those whom the Spirit of the Lord foresaw their hearts of stone, and I will put into them hearts of flesh, because he was about to be made manifest in the flesh and dwell in us. For my brethren, the habitation of our heart is a holy temple unto the Lord. For the prophet saith again, In what place shall I appear before the Lord my God and be glorified? He answers, I will confess unto thee in the congregation, in the midst of my brethren, and will sing unto thee in the church of the saints. Wherefore, we are they whom he has brought into that good land. But what signifies the milk and honey? Because as the child is nourished first with the milk and then with honey, so we, being kept alive by the belief of his promise and his word, shall live and have dominion over the land. For he foretold before, saying, Increase and multiply, and have dominion over the beasts, fishes, and birds. But who is there that is now able to have this dominion over the wild beasts, or fishes, or fowls of the air? For you know that to rule is to have power, that a man should be set over what he rules. But for as much as this we have not now, he tells us when we shall have it, namely, when we shall become perfect that we may be made the inheritors of the covenant of the Lord. Chapter 6 The Sacrifice of Jesus and of a Goat, an Evident Type of Christ Crucified Understand then, my beloved children, that the good God hath before manifest all things unto us, that we might know to whom we ought always to give thanks and praise. If, therefore, the Son of God, who is the Lord of all, and shall come to judge both the quick and dead, hath suffered that by his stripes we might live, let us believe that the Son of God could not have suffered but for us. But being crucified, they gave him vinegar and gall to drink. Hear therefore how the priests of the temple did foreshow this also. The Lord by his command, which was written, declared that whosoever did not fast the appointed fast, he should die the death, because he also was himself one day to offer up his body for our sins that so the type of what was done in Isaac might be fulfilled, who was offered upon the altar. What therefore is it that he says by the prophet? And let them eat of the goat which is offered in the day of the fast for all their sins. Hearken diligently, my brethren, and all the priests and they only shall eat the inwards, not washed with vinegar. Why so? Because I know that when I shall hereafter offer my flesh for the sins of a new people, you will give me vinegar to drink, mixed with gall. Therefore do you only eat, the people fasting the while, and lamenting in sackcloth and ashes, and that he might foreshow that he was to suffer for them. Hear then how he appointed it. Take, says he, two goats, fair and alike, and offer them, and let the high priest take one of them for a burnt offering. And what shall be done with the other? Let it, says he, be accursed. 
Consider how exactly this appears to have been a type of Jesus, and let all the congregation spit upon it and prick it, and put the scarlet wool about its head, and thus let it be carried forth into the wilderness. And this being done, he that was appointed to convey the goat led it into the wilderness, and took away the scarlet wool, and put it upon a thorn bush, whose young sprouts, when we find them in the field, we are wont to eat. So the fruit of that thorn only is sweet. And to what end was this ceremony? Consider, one was offered upon the altar, the other was accursed. And why was that which was accursed crowned? Because they shall see Christ on that day having a scarlet garment about his body, and shall say, Is not this he whom we crucified? Having despised him, pierced him, mocked him, certainly this is he who then said that he was the Son of God. As therefore he shall be then like to what he was on earth, so were the Jews heretofore commanded to take two goats fair and equal, that when they shall see our Saviour hereafter coming in the clouds of heaven, they may be amazed at the likeness of the goats. Wherefore ye here again see a type of Jesus who was to suffer for us. But what then signifies this, that the wool was to be put into the midst of the thorns? This also is a figure of Jesus set out to the church. For as he who would take away the scarlet wool must undergo many difficulties, because that thorn was very sharp and with difficulty get it, so says Christ, they that will see me and come to my kingdom must through many afflictions and troubles attain unto me. Chapter 7 The Red Heifer, Another Type of Christ But what type do you suppose it to have been where it is commanded to the people of Israel that grown persons in whom sins are come to perfection should offer an heifer, and after they had killed it should burn the same? But then young men should take up the ashes and put them in vessels, and tie a piece of scarlet wool and hyssop upon a stick, and so the young men should sprinkle every one of the people, and they should be clear from their sins. Consider how all these are delivered in a figure to us. This heifer is Jesus Christ. The wicked men that were to offer it are those sinners who brought him to death, who afterwards have no more to do with it, for the sinners have no more the honor of handling it. But the young men that performed the sprinkling signified those who preach to us the forgiveness of sins and the purification of the heart to whom the Lord gave authority to preach his gospel, being at the beginning twelve to signify the tribes, because there were twelve tribes of Israel. But why were there three young men appointed to sprinkle? To denote Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they were great before God. And why was the wool put upon a stick? because the kingdom of Jesus was founded upon the cross, and therefore they that put their trust in him shall live for ever. But why was the wool and hyssop put together? To signify that in the kingdom of Christ there shall be evil and filthy days, in which, however, we shall be saved. And because he that has any disease in the flesh by some filthy humors is cured by hyssop. Wherefore these things being thus done, are to us indeed evident, but to the Jews they are obscure, because they hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Chapter 8 Of the circumcision of the ears, and how in the first institution of circumcision Abraham mystically foretold Christ by name. And therefore the scripture again speaks concerning our ears, that God has circumcised them together with our hearts. For thus saith the Lord by the holy prophet, by the hearing of the ear they obeyed me. And again, they who are afar off shall hear and understand what things I have done, and again circumcise your hearts, saith the Lord. And again he saith, Hear, O Israel, for thus saith the Lord thy God. And again the Spirit of God prophesieth, saying, Who is there that would live for ever? Let him hear the voice of my Son. And again, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, because the Lord has spoken these things for a witness. And again he saith, Hear the word of the Lord, ye princes of the people. And again, hear, O children, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Wherefore he has circumcised our ears, that we shall hear his word and believe. But as for that circumcision, in which the Jews trust, it is abolished. For the circumcision of which God spake was not of the flesh. But they have transgressed his commands, because the evil one hath deceived them. For thus God bespeaks them, 
thus saith the lord your god here i find the new law so not among thorns but circumcise yourselves to the lord your god and what doth he mean by this saying hearken unto your lord and again he saith circumcise the hardness of your hearts and harden not your neck and again behold saith the lord all the nations are uncircumcised they have not lost their foreskin but this people is uncircumcised in heart but you will say the jews were circumcised for a sign and so are all the syrians and arabians and all the idolatrous priests but are they therefore of the covenant of israel and even the egyptians themselves are circumcised understand therefore children these things more fully that abraham was the first that brought in circumcision looking forward in the spirit to jesus circumcised having received the mystery of three letters for the scripture says that abraham circumcised three hundred and eighteen men of his house but what therefore was the mystery that was made known unto him mark first the eighteen and next the three hundred for the numeral letters of ten and eight are t h and these denote jesus and because the cross was that by which we were to find grace therefore he adds three hundred the note of which is t the figure of the cross wherefore by two letters he signified jesus and by the third his cross he who has put the engrafted gift of his doctrine within us knows that i never taught to any one a more certain truth but i trust that ye are worthy of it chapter nine that the commands of moses concerning clean and unclean beasts were all designed for a spiritual signification but why did moses say ye shall not eat of the swine neither the eagle nor the hawk nor the crow nor any fish that has not a scale upon him i answer that in the spiritual sense he comprehended three doctrines that were to be gathered from thence besides which he says to them in the book of deuteronomy and i will give my statutes unto this people wherefore it is not the command of god that they should not eat these things but moses in the spirit spake unto them now the sow he had forbade them to eat meaning thus much thou shalt not join thyself to such persons as are like unto swine who whilst they live in pleasure forget their god but when any want pinches them then they know the lord as the sow when she is full knows not her master but when she is hungry she makes a noise and being again fed is silent neither says he shalt thou eat the eagle nor the hawk nor the kite nor the crow that is thou shalt not keep company with such kind of men as know not how by their labor and sweat to get themselves food but injuriously ravish away the things of others and watch how to lay snares for them when at the same time they appear to live in perfect innocence so these birds alone seek not food for themselves but sitting idle seek how they may eat of the flesh others have provided being destructive through their wickedness neither says he shalt thou eat the lamprey nor the polypus nor the cuttlefish that is thou shalt not be like such men by seeking to converse with them who are altogether wicked and adjudged to death for so those fishes are alone accursed that wallow in the mire nor swim as other fishes but tumble in the dirt at the bottom of the deep but he adds neither shalt thou eat of the hare to what end to signify this to us thou shalt not be an adulterer nor liken thyself to such persons for the hare every year multiplies the places of its conception and as many years as it lives so many it has neither shalt thou eat of the hyena that is again be not an adulterer nor a corrupter of others neither be like to such and wherefore so because that creature every year changes its kind which is sometimes male and sometimes female for which cause also he justly hated the weasel to the end that they should not be like such persons who with their mouths commit wickedness by reason of their uncleanness nor join themselves with those impure women who with their mouths commit wickedness because that animal conceives with its mouth moses therefore speaking as concerning meats delivered indeed three great precepts to them in spiritual signification of those commands but they according to the desires of the flesh understood him as if he had only meant it of meats 
And therefore David took aright the knowledge of his threefold command, saying in like manner, Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, as the fishes before mentioned in the bottom of the deep in darkness, nor stood in the way of sinners, as they who seem to fear the Lord, but yet sin as the sow and hath not sat in the seat of the scorners, as those birds who sit and watch that they may devour. Here you have the law concerning meat perfectly set forth and according to the true knowledge of it. But, says Moses, ye shall eat all that divideth the hoof, and cheweth the cud, signifying therefore such as one as having taken his food, knows him that nourisheth him, and resting upon him rejoiceth in him and in this he spake well having respect to the commandment what therefore is it that he says that we should hold fast to them that fear the lord with those who meditate on the command of the word which they have received in their heart with those that declare the righteous judgments of the lord and keep his commandments in short with those who know that to meditate is a work of pleasure and therefore exercise themselves in the word of the lord but why might they eat those that clave the hoof because the righteous liveth in this present world but his expectation is fixed upon the other see brethren how admirably moses commanded these things but how should we thus know all this and understand it we therefore understanding aright the commandments speak as the lord would have us wherefore he has circumcised our ears and our hearts that we might know these things end of barnabas chapters one through nine